Hello, and welcome to section 13.3, Intersections of Polar Curves. You'll notice that I have this graphic from the family circus, where little Billy has been all over the neighborhood, and his path jumps around and around and goes all over the place. This is particularly appropriate for what we're going to be looking at for this section. At the end of this section, we should be able to answer these questions. What is the difference between a true intersection point and an apparent intersection point? How can we locate true intersection points? And how can we verify true intersection points? Well, let's look at two graphs that we've created with polar expressions. The first one is 3 plus 2 cosine theta. Now, which of these graphs would be that graph? Would it be this four-leaf rose? or this limason without an inner loop. You're right, it's the red graph, the limason. Now, that means that R2, 5 sine 2 theta, is our four-leaf rose. And we know it's going to have four leaves because the coefficient on theta is even, and so we double the coefficient to find the number of leaves. Now, if we look at these two graphs, it appears that they have intersect at eight different points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But if we look at how these graphs are generated, we'll see that while their paths cross, we don't consider them intersections unless they meet at the exact instant in time. So for the same angle, they're, in the, they're the same distance away from the origin. Let's watch how these graphs are generated on the calculator. So you'll see that I've put these two graphs in, and I've set my window to go from 0 to 360, and I've made my theta step a little smaller so that we can see the graphs generated slowly. I've also, in my mode, changed from sequential to simultaneous graphing. So these two graphs will be plotted at the same time. And if we go back to our window, it's negative 6 to 6 so that we can see the graph a little better. So now, let's look at how these graphs are generated and see when the two graphs are in the same location on the screen at the same time. There's one, two, so it appears that not every one of these locations was the same for our graph as for the same values of theta. How can we figure out which of these graph locations is the same? Now, when I mean the same location at the same time, let's think about two students here at PrEP going through their days and moving from class to class. If we traced their paths throughout the day, it would look much like Billy's path, all over the place, back and forth. And occasionally, the paths of these two students would cross. If we followed both of their paths, we could potentially see where that other student, the first student, had been if we're following the path of the second student. Now, there would also potentially be times during the day when they actually run into each other or see each other at the same time in the same location on campus. So, when they're there at the same time and the same location, we consider that to be a true intersection. If the second student's path crosses over the first student's path after the first student has been through that location. We don't consider that a true intersection. So let's figure out how to find a true intersection. Well, the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take my two polar expressions and I'm going to plot them in function mode instead of in polar mode. So I'll take these two expressions, 
and I'm going to go and change my mode to function mode. Now I'm going to go and change my window because now I don't want to go from negative 6 to 6 because my input variable theta has become x. So since my theta value went from 0 to 360, now my x value needs to go from 0 to 360. So I'm going to change this to 0 to 360. And let's make our scale 30 degrees. And our y value from negative 6 to 6 should still be fine. Now, when I plot these two graphs, 3 plus 2 cosine x and 5 sine 2x, I'll get these two graphs. Now, since x represents theta, these two graphs are showing what happens for every value of theta between 0 and 360 degrees. And you can see that for particular values of theta, we have intersections. In fact, we have 1, 2, 3, 4 true intersections between 0 and 360 degrees. To find those values, we'll use the calc menu. So here, we also need to change from r and theta to x and y, or our graphical coordinates, rectangular coordinates. Go back to our graph, and we're going to calculate an intersection. So let's look at the second, in, or this intersection right here, since I we're pretty close to it. So on the first curve, go to the left of the intersection, and the second curve will go to the right. And we can see that when y is, when theta, or x, is 185.829 degrees, we have an intersection for, our, or an r value, since in this graph, y is equivalent to r, of 1.010. We could repeat the process for the other three true intersections, and we should find that off of this graph, our intersections are these four values.